Hi, I'm Scotty. If you want to learn how to service and repair antique mechanical clocks, then subscribe to my channel. Welcome to Scotty's Clock World. All the brass parts have just come out of the ultrasonic cleaner. So we'll cut the wires that are keeping them joined together. Pop that into the strike side. Open these two up. Pop those over there. That's the snail. We'll see how that operates later on. These are the strike side parts. First wheel. Bring there. Second wheel. Also known as the star wheel for obvious reasons. Third wheel. Which is also called a warning wheel. That's the pin there. But we'll see how that operates later on. And the fly. Right. Now we're going to put the parts back into the movement and we'll check them to see whether we need to do any rebushing on this movement or not. We'll start off with the going train. First wheel in. Second wheel. And the escape wheel. Now we'll put the back plate on. Line the posts. Turn it over. So we can see what we've got. First wheel, pulling back a little bit, that's got him. Second wheel, come back a little bit more. Right. And the escape wheel. Goes in there. Check it out, make sure everything's the right place. Pop 
that lever in, though we don't need it at the moment, the hammer lever. And we'll just check to make sure that things are turning. Put a couple of nuts on these posts. Hold the movement together. Then we'll check and see how the pivots fit into the bushes. We don't need to tighten those up fully. That'll be sufficient for us to have a look and see what sort of movement we've got in the bushes. Now we'll look at that one there first. No, that's pretty good. And that one there. Which is the escape wheel. I don't think this movement has done a lot of work. They haven't been rebushed recently and they're in pretty good nick. They'll run a little bit more smoothly than that once we get some oil on it. The first wheel's quite solid, there's no movement there. Just check for some end play. Yep, some end play there. Not a lot, but there is some, sufficient. And on the escape wheel. All right. Well, they seem to be all right. No rebushing required there. I'll remove those wheels and then I'll put in the strike side tray. Undo the nuts. Back in the tray. Turn the movement upside down. Take the back plate off. Now we'll put in the strike side. Check the pivots and bushes on that. Second wheel, star wheel. Goes there. Warning wheel. And the fly. Now put the back plate on.
Now we'll start to put the wheels in place. This wheel. Star wheel goes around there. sitting down a bit. A bit better. Turn that round to give us a better view. First wheel. That's Second wheel. Up a tiny bit. Second wheel. Hammer post. on that post there, hold the plates together, not tight, just sufficiently tight so that nothing drops out. Or well, we check the bushes etc. moving pretty freely. Let's see if it's moving too freely. Down a bit. Look at the star wheel first, that one there. Plenty of end play in there, that's, that's alright. Check the first wheel, this pivot here, that hasn't been rebushed. That's what looks alright. First wheel, that pivot there. Tiny bit of movement, but probably not enough to worry about. Star wheel, that one there, is alright. Now the end play. You can see the end play there on the first wheel. 
star wheel, heaps of in play. Fly came out, so it's now back in again. Okay, warning wheel pivot, that one there. Oh, that looks pretty good. And the fly, that one there. Right, this movement hasn't done very much work. A lot of these haven't been rebushed, and they're quite acceptable. Warning wheel, there. Actually, we might have to redo that one, I think. It's a little bit loose. And the pivot there. That's all right. Well, I'll mark that. Plenty of end play as you can see. I'll have to rebush that one there. Oh well that's not too bad, only one of them. I'll take the movement apart, then we'll rebush that bushing up there, we'll check the pivot again, and then proceed. This is a bush that we're going to replace, that one there. And that's a warning wheel pivot that fits into that bush. So we'll get underway. Set up our machine first. First we put in the center finding tool because we want to find the center of that bush so we can align it properly. Now we put the plate onto the machine and lower the center finding piece into the bush that we want to replace. Tighten this up while holding the center finding piece in the correct position. Yep, set in the center. Now because we haven't got any plate hanging over that we can put into this side of the machine to clamp it down, when I'm turning it, I'll hold the plate stationary so it doesn't move. Take that piece out. Now we need to find the size, the internal diameter of the bush that we're going to use. 76, 77 mil. Back again. So we take our box of bushes, that's 77 mil. Have a look on our box again. And the maximum diameter is 2.0 mil. Write that down. 
2.00 Put that aside Now we have to select the reamers and we're ending up with 2.0 2.47 1.97 So I'll start off with the smallest one 1.20 And then having used that reamer to ream out the hole we'll then go up to the next size Secure the reamer Push it down very lightly into the hole, turn the handle, raise it up, take some of the swarf off it, and again being very careful because this is the thinnest reamer and too much pressure on it will turn it into a corkscrew, literally. Just keep turning the handle slowly with minimum pressure it's a slow and steady operation you can't rush it right I'll remove that rim up Now we've got 1.97 mil. That's the next reamer that we're going to use. The pivot won't fit in that and we'll end up reaming it out with a brooch. Once again, turning the handle slowly and using a little bit of pressure. We start cutting into the back plate. You can see the swarf coming off it as it turns around. This will make a 1.97 mil hole by the time we're finished. We've got a two mil bush to put in it. So we'll have to do a little bit of broaching with a cutting brooch once this is finished. Quite a hard brass back plate here, it's taking a bit of time to cut through, but you can never hurry these things. You've got to take your time. Okay, now to finish this hole off. Still being careful not to hurt the reamer, it's almost through. Takes a little bit of time to cut it. It's almost there, there we go. It's now finished. I'll take the reamer out. And put our hammer block in. Tighten it down. Now we want our bushing. Place it upright over the top of the hole. Using a pair of tweezers makes it a little easier. Level it out. We'll give it one light tap to make sure it's centered. There it is, centered. Now we can hammer it in. It's now flush. Take the hammer block out. Undo the clamp. And 
there's our newly installed bush. We're now going to broach it out so that it fits the pivot on the warning wheel. Before we start broaching, we'll try to put the pivot into the bush. As you can see, it doesn't fit, won't go in. Right, next step, we have to find the correct sized cutting brooch to ream the hole out. So we use the back plate. And hold it. And then select some brooches and put them into the bush. Bit too big, on a smaller one. We'll probably finish off on that size, but it's too big to start. That one also, to find a smaller one. Here we go. See it's sticking out little bit the other side that's the one we need we'll carefully take that out of the back plate and put it into a pin vise it's got him that centered Before we start turning, we have to have the cutting brooch at 90 degrees to the plate in both directions to keep it square. So, just checking and then slowly turning the cutting brooch, not too much at a time, these things cut very, very efficiently. Try the pivot. Doesn't fit. Little bit more broaching. Line it up 90 degrees. Remove that out. Try the bush again. Mm, getting close. The pivot's getting quite close to fitting, but not quite. Back again. Align it 90 degrees. few turns, check the wheel again, fits in. What we'll do now, we'll put the top plate on, <laughs> got those. Pillars aligned. Pins goes in there. Put the hammer pin in, get the plates a bit closer together. Now, 
put that pivot in. You can see it's not spinning freely. So we need to take a tiny little piece more out with a cutting brooch, not much, but a tiny little bit more. Remove the back plate. Back to our cutting brooch again. Line it up 90 degrees. Couple more turns, then pull it out slowly. Pivot in again. Back plate on. Line the posts. goes in there, hammers in, still a little bit tight, if we have a close look we can see that that pivot is not going fully into the bushing. All right, a little bit more then. We're getting close, but we have to make haste very slowly because three or four extra turns on the cutting brooch and the hole will be too big. You'll have to start all over again. Cutting brooch into the into the bush, line it up, 90 degrees. Spin the pin vise. Get our wheel back in again. Back plate on. tightly. There we go. The hammer out of the way. You can see how freely that is spinning. Now we'll check it for end plate. You can see it moving backwards and forwards. Right, that's been rebushed. Now we'll start to put the movement back together again. Is we're going to remove the mainspring, clean it, grease it, and reinstall it back into the barrel. First thing we have to do is remove the cap from the barrel, turn it round so those lugs aren't catching on the top, put it in the centre, and then push it and out it comes. Right, we'll now remove the mainspring from the barrel. Tighten it down.
having selected the right size sleeve will now wind the spring up first up we'll have a look and see where our lug is I'll unwind that right there's our lug We'll keep that at the top so we know where it is. Hold it with our gloved hand. And wind up the spring winder. Then taking our sleeve, we'll put it over and under, and I'll show you that in a moment. Once I've removed it from the, from the barrel, Wind it back and slowly release it. All right. Now the spring comes out of the barrel. We'll put that arbor back into the spring winder. We'll use our hook and hook it into the end of the spring, the hole. Then wind the spring winder again until you can remove the sleeve and then slowly unwind the spring take the sleeve out of the spring winder and that's our spring now it's free from the barrel Right now we'll clean it using kerosene and grease it and then we'll put it back into the barrel once again. Right, to clean the spring we're going to need a small piece of scour pad and some kerosene. Far better to use kerosene than petrol, it's nowhere near as flammable. We'll put a little bit of kero There we go, on our scour pad, and holding the spring, wrap the scour pad round it, and start working up the length of the spring. and run back down again that'll pick up any extra dirt that's on it that may have been dissolved by the kerosene when we're rubbing it up the other way now clean piece of cloth wrap it over the over the spring slide it up you can see the gunk we're getting off the spring turn it over the other side and do some more
and using a clean part of the rag we'll run down remove any kerosene that's still on the spring that's what we got off the spring then just to make sure that the spring is clean take another clean piece of cloth wipe it up the spring once again reverse it to come back down so you can see there's almost nothing on the rag right we'll leave that spring for two to three minutes to evaporate anything that may still be on there any light ends of any type then we'll come back and we'll grease it this is a grease we're going to use to grease the spring. We don't use liquid clock oil simply because once the spring is seriously compressed the oil runs out, drops into the bottom of the case and makes a mess of the case. So, using a, a toothpick or a cotton bud, load some grease onto it and then run it round inside of the spring. You only do one side of each coil because once it compresses then the grease is transferred to both sides of the spring. Come on the outer band. Come on the inside now. That round bit better access. Some in behind. You'll see once we compress the spring on the spring winder, the excess grease will run out. And we'll remove it before we put it back into the barrel. Oh, that looks all right. That there, put the grease aside. We're now going to wind the spring back onto the winding arbor. Take the spring up, put it on the winding arbor. Turn the handle on the spring winder. There we go. We turn the handle of the spring winder until the notch on the winding arbor catches on the hole in the mainspring. Then, with our sleeve ready to go, holding it with a gloved hand just in case it slips. We then wind the, the spring down, compress it, while it's there we'll wipe off some of the excess grease you can see coming out there, and there, and on the other side.
now with our sleeve once again we align that notch with the hole in the mainspring we slide it in under and then wind it back a little bit like so so that we've got three quarters of an inch or an inch that's got him an inch or three quarters of an inch of mainspring extending out now reverse the wind up unwind the spring remove it from the spring wind up now we'll take out the winding arbor now we look for our lug which is there align the hole the other side of it press it into the barrel down tightly and then wind it round and you'll feel once that lug has taken up the hole in the mainspring put the winding arbor back in again back into the spring winder make sure we've got the, the lug is caught right now first the spring winder hold the barrel with a glove wind it up you can remove the sleeve having done that reverse the winder and unwind the spring move the barrel the spring winder you can see there's some extra grease come out there I'll wipe that off press down the spring make sure it's down below that lip there find the top of the plate that one there drop it on the top of the barrel line those lugs in about the middle press it down you'll hear it click when it's in then holding the barrel turn the top plate clockwise to lock it in there it is the barrel of our clock we've taken the We've taken the mainspring out, we've cleaned it, we've greased it, we've put it back in. I'll do the other one off camera, then we'll come back and continue to reassemble the movement. Right, it's time to put the movement back together again. Put the first wheel in. We'll do the strike side first and put that train in. First wheel. Second wheel, also known as the star wheel.
third wheel. Actually, we'll take the star wheel out and we'll put the third wheel in first, a bit easier. We'll put the star wheel over the top. A pair of tweezers might help. Got him. Now the warning wheel, as I said before, that's the one with a pin on it. Bit hard to see there. There we go. And then the fly. goes in there. That's the strike train. First wheel, second wheel or the star wheel, third wheel, the fourth wheel which is also the warning wheel, and then the fly. Now put the going side train in. Goes in there. The escape wheel. Goes there. Right, now we can put the back plate on. Turn that round. The hammer lift lever. Goes in that hole in there, the little guy. Uh, we'll put the back plate on. On this We'll put a nut on this post here. Loosely. That'll do to hold that for the moment. Should be down under that wheel, under the star wheel. Right, let's put the plates together. Goes there. Goes there. Put another on there. Not too tight. Now we'll put the pivots into the bushes. Get the escape wheel in now. First wheel on the strike side.
star wheel, which is the second wheel, strike side. Bring the third wheel in. Ready? Fourth wheel, strike side. I like to do the fly first. It, the pivot on the fly tends to be a tiny little bit longer. Uh, now the fourth wheel. Which is a warning wheel. Second wheel has got him. And we've got escape wheels come out again. That's what's throwing it all out of whack. down a little bit put a nut on this pillar here hold that for a moment hammers right Fourth wheel and the fly. Tighten those down. Put a nut on this pillar. Before we tighten them down. Fully, we'll make sure that all the pivots are in the bushes. So we'll apply a little bit of power to the strike train. Then we'll check the going train. little bit tight but I think a bit of oil will fix that all right they're right we'll tighten those down not too tight but we'll tighten them down hold it in place then we'll put the pieces on the front plate See in the bottom corner there, it says 12 centimetres. That's the total length of the pendulum. Before we put the parts on the front, we'll put the pallets and crutch on. Drop them in there. Turn him over. Line the pivot up. Now we'll put the back cock on, which is that piece there. That's the suspension spring. 
for the pendulum. That's yep, still on there. We'll attach that to there. Let the hammer fall again. That's all right. We'll adjust that later once we've got the other parts on. We can make sure that it works correctly. Right. Back to the front of the movement. Rack goes on there. Have to put this lifting cam on in a moment, but I'll do that once I've got the other ones on, the other levers on. Lever goes there. Right, we need a taper pin to fit in there. Right, taper pin goes in there. down a little bit to hold it in rust on some of those levers I'll clean them up I think before we go any further now we'll put the main springs back into the movement we'll start off with the strike side slides in there got him Now the going side. Right, they're both seated properly. Now we'll put the clicks on. Make sure it's seated.
everything properly. That's down. Have to lift the snail. And underneath, make sure that's still one, two, three. Screw that down. The other screw. Goes in there. Right, tighten those down. Clicks. Uh, the clicks are right. This sewer clip on. Squeeze him in. That's got him. Now we'll oil the movement. We'll be using Mobius D5, a Swiss made clock oil. Uh, we'll start oiling the pivots. Up to the top. One in the back cock. One for the first wheel. Put a couple of larger drops. On the back of the winding arbor. Right, we'll turn that over. Get some more oil. Now we'll start to oil the front of the movement. First wheel down there, a little bit on the snail, down the minute arbor, and 
that flirt, the flirt up at the top. I'll put some inside for that. First wheel. Star wheel. Third wheel. The fourth wheel or warning wheel. And then the fly up there. Now we need to get inside the pivot here with the pallets on, down the other end, on the inside of this flirt. a drop on each of the faces of the pallet. All right. It is done.